a very warm welcome to each and everyone present today. My name is Vineet and we are going to have a session on Hadoop ecosystem. Without any further ado, we'll just move on to the next slide that is the agendas for today's session. In today's session, we are going to go through the entire Hadoop ecosystem which consists of various tools like HDFS which is nothing but the storage unit of Hadoop, YARN, MapReduce, the processing unit, We'll go through Apache Spark, the real-time analytical tool that runs over Hadoop. We'll go through Pig and Hive. We'll understand HBase and where it stands in the Hadoop ecosystem. We'll understand Mahout and what is Spark MLib. We'll understand Apache Drill. We'll understand Zookeeper and why it is used. We'll understand Uzi and its importance. We'll understand Flume and Scoop and how they are used to move data in and out of HDFS. We'll understand what is Solar and Lucene. And finally, at the end, we'll understand what is Apache Ambari. Okay, so this is the clear agenda for today's session. We'll move on to the very next slide and understand what is actually a Hadoop ecosystem. Okay, the very first thing is Hadoop ecosystem is not one tool. It's not a programming language or it's not a single framework. It is a group of tools that are there which are used together by various companies in various domains for different tasks. Okay, Hadoop alone cannot provide all the facilities or services that are required to process the big data. Okay, so like for example, Hadoop can store big data, Hadoop can process big data up to a certain limit. However, there are much more other requirements that are there. For example, we would like to create recommendation engines over big data. We would like to run clustering algorithms over big data. We would like to get the real-time insights using big data itself because Hadoop is a batch processing framework, right? So if I want a real-time insight, I would need another tool that can run over HDFS that can utilize and leverage HDFS, right? The basic thing that you need to understand here is one single tool like Hadoop is not going to solve all your problems. You'll have to use various other tools over Hadoop or along with Hadoop to get rid or get the solution of every problem that you have, okay? But before that, before doing so, it is important that you know what are the different tools that are there which can work with Hadoop. And in today's session, we'll exactly do that. We'll try and find out what are the various tools that are there which can be used with Hadoop and what functions they can perform in their own domains. Okay? Guys, before we move ahead, are you guys clear what is the importance of understanding Hadoop ecosystem? Can you give me a quick confirmation on the chat window? Andrea says yes. What about others guys? What about others? Can you please give me a quick confirmation on the chat? Ramesh says yes. Vardhan says yes. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to the next slide. Okay. The very first tool that we'll understand is HDFS. Now as you know, HDFS is nothing but Hadoop distributed file system. It is the storage unit of Hadoop. HDFS is entirely the Hadoop cluster which is formed by data nodes. Data nodes are nothing but commodity hardwares which are cheap hardwares which can be clustered together using the Hadoop framework and the entire file system that gets created on which you can store big data is called Hadoop distributed file system. Using HDFS you can store any kind of data be it structured, be it unstructured or be it semi-structured. Okay. Now once you store the data in HDFS, you can view the entire data as a single unit as well. HDFS stores data across various nodes that these nodes are nothing but the data nodes and it also maintains the log files of what data is stored at which position. So basically HDFS has got two components, one is the name node and other is the data node. Data, name node is the one which manages the entire cluster which manages the entire set of data nodes and keeps the information, keeps the metadata of the data that is stored in these data nodes. Data nodes on the other hand are the slave machines, the commodity hardware which actually stores the data. So HDFS is the one which solves the primary problem of storing big data. Okay, so are you guys clear with what is HDFS and how it can be used? Can you give me a quick confirmation in the chat window? Ramesh says yes, Matthew says yes, thank you very much. Andrea says can we store any kind of data? Absolutely yes Andrea, as I mentioned you can store any kind of data be it structured, unstructured or semi-structured. In 
practical terms you can store any file you can store a document you can store a directory you can store a video you can store an image or you can store a music file anything and everything can be stored in HDFS does that answer your query thank you so it's time we move on and explore the next tool in Hadoop ecosystem which is yarn now we'll explore yarn now as the name suggests it is nothing but a resource negotiator okay the main purpose of yarn is to allocate resources to run particular task over the Hadoop cluster so yarn has basically two components one is the resource manager and the other one is the node manager as soon as a client submits a job these resources are nothing but the containers in which the jobs can be executed okay node manager is the one which act finally executes the job within these containers and manages the entire thing on the data nodes okay so the resource manager is the master daemon and the node manager is the slave daemon apart from that i would like to tell you one important thing about yarn yarn was introduced in hadoop 2.0 which enabled various ecosystem tools to connect with hadoop distributed file system and leverage big data okay so we'll understand this better when we come to the map reduced slide okay so are you guys clear with this slide if you have any questions you can ask me right now Ramesh says yes what about others looks like Andrea has a question no okay no problem so great we'll move on to the next slide so we now come to MapReduce which is the processing unit of Hadoop. So once the data is stored on Hadoop distributed file system, the next task is to process that data. For doing so, one can use Apache MapReduce. In Hadoop 1.x, MapReduce was the only framework that can be used to process the distributed data that is present on HDFS. However, so YAN was the next layer over HDFS and MapReduce now connected with YAN to allocate resources for executing the MapReduce task. Similarly, many other ecosystem tools or databases now can connect with YAN and leverage HDFS. Okay, so it happened after YAN. So essentially it has got two functions, one is the map and the reduce. Map function is used for filtering, grouping and sorting kind of functions. And the result of the map function is then aggregated in the reduce phase and the entire summarized result is dumped on the HDFS itself. So this is how Hadoop MapReduce works. So I have a question here asked by Matthew. Can you explain the yarn processing mechanism in terms of application manager? That is a great question Matthew. So however it belongs to the yarn slide. Even then I'll try and answer it right now. So what happens is when a client submits a job on the Hadoop cluster, so that job gets submitted to the resource manager. Resource manager then creates a container, allocates the resource in which application master is started. Now this application master gets registered with the resource manager and says that okay I am ready and I need a container to execute the task. Resource manager then allocates a container to the application master. Application master then notifies the node manager that okay I have the container ready to execute my job and it requests the node manager to launch that container. As soon as the node manager launches the container, application master finally executes the task in the container and the result is given back to the client. Okay, so this is the entire workflow that happens with yarn along with resource manager and node management. Does that answer your query Matthew? Okay, Andreas is great. Matthew says yes, thank you. Okay, Ramesh has a good question that is what are the languages supported by MapReduce framework? MapReduce framework is not confined to any single language. By default, MapReduce has been written in Java, hence the primary language or the most widely used language for writing a MapReduce program is Java. However, you can write your MapReduce program in Python, Perl, PHP or any other languages that you can think of. Okay? Ramesh, does that answer query? Great, thank you. Okay. Now it's time we move on to the next slide. And We'll explore what is Apache Pig. Apache Pig was a tool that was developed at Yahoo. So it is nothing but a data processing tool that runs over Hadoop or you can say that it sits on top of the Hadoop. 
Apache Pig has its own language that is called Pig Latin, which is nothing but a data flow language or a, you can call it as an instructional language. For example, if you want to load a data, you have a command like load this data from path and then you can dump that data or perform various functions like filter or group. Okay. So using Pig Latin, the life of the developers became very easy. They need not write the entire full MapReduce job for executing some processing over the big data. For people who cannot write a MapReduce program or, or were not comfortable with MapReduce, for them Pig Latin came as a blessing. Or for them, Pig came as a blessing. By using Pig, the task for them became very easy and they were able to leverage big data. It is said that approximately one line of Pig Latin is equals to 100 lines of MapReduce. So just think how much time are you saving there, okay? You can perform all the ETL operations that you would like to execute over big data using Pig. So I hope this gives you a clear picture how Apache Pig came into picture. And what is the importance of Apache Pig? Andy has a question, who converts Pig job into MapReduce job? So Pig internally has a runtime engine which converts the Pig Latin queries into a MapReduce job or you can call it as the Pig compiler which converts the Pig Latin into MapReduce job and it is executed over the Hadoop distributed cluster. Once the job is executed, you get the result back on the terminal or it can be stored on the HDFS as per your choice. Does that answer your query, Andrea? Andrea says, so it is taken care by Pig itself? Absolutely, yes. You need not worry about that. That is what I said. You have been kept away from MapReduce. You can easily use Pig Latin and execute the same task without writing a MapReduce program. Pig will do the job for you. Pig will convert your Pig Latin queries into MapReduce and then give you the result. Okay. Ramesh says, why they named it as Pig? Is there any relevance? Absolutely yes, Ramesh. That's a good question again. Uh, Pig, pig is an animal which can digest anything, which eats anything, okay? So here Apache pig can consume any kind of data, be it structured, unstructured or semi-structured. Uh, you just feed that data into pig and that can be stored on HDFS or it can be processed using pig. Ramesh says okay. Thank you. Okay then, we'll move on and explore the next tool in the chain that is Apache Hive. Apache Hive is one of the most important tool that is there in the Hadoop ecosystem. Apache Hive was developed at Facebook. Now the idea behind Apache Hive was the time when it was developed the relational databases were flourishing. These were the databases that were used by most of the organizations, most of the companies. Nobody knew about NoSQL or a file system like Hadoop. Even Facebook had its website on MySQL. So the workforce there mostly was working on MySQL or SQL like queries or PL SQL, PLSQL. So for Facebook it was a problem because the workforce was skilled in SQL. However, for writing a MapReduce program, you had to know uh, some other programming language. So what Facebook did is, uh, Facebook came up with a tool that is called Hive using which you can write SQL like queries that is called high query language and execute the same task over the Hadoop cluster and leverage big data. Just like Pig, using Hive, you can write simple SQL like queries and the task that you are executing using MapReduce now can be executing using Hive without getting into the complexities of MapReduce. Okay, even using Hive you can connect from client applications like Java as well if you have that requirement. Okay, so Hive is one important tool that is used by a lot of people out there who do not want to get into uh, writing the MapReduce program. Okay, so guys are you clear what is Hive and what is its importance? Ramesh has a question, can we perform all the SQL like statements using Hive? The answer is no, you will not be able to perform everything that you used to do in by SQL or using SQL. However, the most common functions that were there like group, filter, co-group, all these things can be done using SQL and the syntax of HQL is very uh, similar to SQL. Okay, so that will be very helpful for you. Ramesh, does that answer your query? Good. So let's move on to the next tool that is Mahot and Spark MLib. 
Mahot is a machine learning library written in Java. It can be used for creating recommendation engines or uh, clusters of data or classify your data into various groups. Okay, so all those algorithms that are there in machine learning can be implemented over big data using Mahot. Okay, so it provides a command line interface to achieve the same task. You would have heard about an analysis that is called market basket analysis which can be easily executed using Mahot over big data. The various other things like recommendation engine as I mentioned which you would have seen in many e-commerce websites like Amazon, Flipkart or many more. Okay, so all those things can be done using Mahot. Okay, so I hope you understand what is Mahot and how it can be used. Can you please write down on the chat window? Ramesh says yes. What about the rest of you? Andrea says yes. Matthew says yes. And Verdun says yes. Thank you very much. I hope everyone else also understood it. Guys, if you have any questions, keep asking me in between. I'll take it at the end of every tool. Okay? Now we come on to Spark, which is a leading tool in the Hadoop ecosystem. MapReduce and Hadoop together can only be used for batch processing. That means you're not getting the results in real time. But out there, there is a requirement for real-time analytics as well, which cannot be done using Hadoop MapReduce, right? In that case, Sparks come into the picture, uh, which can run standalone, as well as it can run over the Hadoop cluster and leverage the same big data to provide you real-time insights, right? As well as Apache Spark is almost 100 times faster than Apache MapReduce. Okay, so I hope this excites you, right? Please write down on the chat window if you are clear with Apache Spark and why is it used. Okay, Andrea says can Spark exist alone? If yes, what are the benefits of integrating of Spark with Hadoop? Yes, Andrea, as I mentioned, Spark has its own clusters which can be used. However, the strength of Spark only comes when you are able to analyze the huge big data that is stored in HDFS. So it is important that you connect your Spark with HDFS and then leverage it. Okay, most of the organizations out there are utilizing the combination of Hadoop and Spark together instead of going with Spark standalone. Is that clear to you, Andrea? Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to the next slide and explore Apache HBase. So what is Apache HBase? Apache HBase is a NoSQL database that runs over Hadoop. Apache HBase can be used for storing any kind of data that is there. Okay, it could be any structured or unstructured data. And Apache HBase has been modeled after Google Big Table and can be utilized to store any big data that is there in Hadoop file system. With Apache HBase, you have an advantage that is you can use HBase as a backend for a website or a web application to query in real time, which cannot be done with tools like PIG, Hive or MapReduce or even HDFS. And hence it is a very important addition to Hadoop ecosystem. Okay, so guys are you clear with this? You can also write a Java application and connect with HBase using the REST APIs, Thrift APIs or Avro APIs. Okay. So I think we have a question here. Andrea says, can we run SQL queries in HBase? No, HBase has its own programming syntax. So you'll not be able to run SQL queries. However, they are very easy to learn. The learning curve is very simple. Does that answer your query, Andrea? Okay. Ramesh says, where the data actually stored is the same HDFS. HBase can run in standalone mode or it can run over HDFS, okay? When you want to leverage HBase and you're using with Hadoop, so the data is stored in HDFS itself. Does that answer your query, Ramesh? Good. Now, we'll go through another tool that is called Apache Drill. Apache Drill is again an open source application which works well with any distributed environment that is out there. It can work with any NoSQL database or a flat file system, okay? The advantage with Apache Drill is that it can connect with various NoSQL databases or a, fl a flat file system or a simple file itself at the same time. So if you have data stored in various uh, sources like let's say you have a data stored in Hadoop distributed file system, you have a data stored in HBase, you have a data stored in MongoDB. 
every one of them has their own syntax to execute queries on them to retrieve the same set of records however using apache drill you can connect to all these databases at a single time execute one query and extract the results from all the three databases and use it for your application okay apache drill is able to do that because it follows the ansi sql which enables you to write a query that can execute or that can be understood by all the three databases so i hope you understand this particular concept please write down on the chat window ramesh says yes matthew says yes andrea says yes so we have a question by ramesh and he says can you give a quick overview on hive versus rel okay it's not an eye to eye comparison however hive is a tool which is most oftenly used an etl tool which has a sql like query in which you can execute sql like queries that is called sql so it makes your life easier to extract the results out of the big data okay however drill at the same time is a tool that can be utilized to combine multiple sources and using a single query you can extract the data out of various sources or execute your processing and get the results from multiple sources okay so this is the advantage of drill over hive using hive you can only work with one data source that is hdfs does that answer your query ramesh Matthew says yes. I hope Ramesh is also clear with it. Let me know if you have any further doubt. We'll move on to the next slide, and now we'll explore Uzi. Apache Uzi is nothing but a scheduler in the Hadoop ecosystem. Now, what does it mean? Let's say you have a MapReduce task that needs to be executed every hour. Now, in that case, instead of manually triggering it, what you can do is you can define a workflow in uzi and schedule your task to be executed after every one hour okay when you see you are doing two things one is you are defining a workflow that could be one task or it could be a combination of tasks that are executed by various tools like mapreduce hive pig etc in a sequence as well as you are defining the frequency in which the workflow needs to be executed okay so your life becomes very easy you need not it go and execute or trigger your job every time that need it needs to be done uzi can do it for you along with that uzi coordinator is another component that is present in uzi which ensures that the job or the workflow is only executed when the data is available so at times if the data is coming from an external source automatically it will ensure that as soon as the data is in the system then only the workflow or the job is executed so it is an event based execution that can be triggered using uzi okay so are you guys clear with this are you clear how uzi is used in the hadoop ecosystem okay i'm getting all the yeses thank you very much good it's very simple to understand right let's move on and we come to flume Flume is again one of the most widely used tools which is used for data ingestion into HDFS okay so using flume you can ingest any kind of data it could be structured it could be semi structured into the hadoop distributed file system and perform various processing after that flume gives you the capability of extracting data out of social media like twitter facebook or you can also extract data from servers where logs are getting generated on a regular interval so flume can be utilized to extract data from there and move into the hdfs okay similarly there could be many other use cases like getting email messages or network traffic etc okay so guys are you clear how flume is used good ramesh says yes very simple thank you the next tool in the order is scoop scoop is again used for data ingestion however scoop is used between relational database and the hdfs so using scoop you can move your data from your relational database into hdfs and vice versa that means you can also move data out of hdfs into an rdbms so it mostly deals with structured data okay so if you compare flume with scoop Flume is mostly used for moving data into the HDFS and deals with streaming data most of the time. Uh, however, Scoop works with structured data and it can move data in and out of HDFS unlike Flume. Guys, are you clear with this? Okay, so let's move on. 
and we come to the next tool that is solar and lucene okay so solar and lucene is again an apache project which has been developed in java lucene in itself is a java library which is for developing search engine and indexers okay apache solar is an application that is built using apache lucene so if you want to develop a search engine or you want to implement search onto your website which works very fast using indexing you can always use apache solar to do that okay so this is the main purpose of apache solar which is an application which is developed using apache lucene so i hope you are clear with what is the use of solar and lucene are you clear ramesh says yes andrea says yes Vardhan says yes. Thank you very much. I hope everyone else is also clear. We'll move on. We come to zookeeper. As the name suggests, the job of zookeeper is to ensure coordination between various tools that are there in the Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. So the main purpose of zookeeper is to ensure that each and every tool is able to communicate with each other without any interruption, so that the entire ecosystems works together in achieving a particular task okay it performs synchronization it performs configuration management grouping and naming of all these things okay it also manages all the services that are running in the hadoop cluster okay so zookeeper is very important component of hadoop cluster if zookeeper is not there your services your daemons your tools will not be able to interact with each other or communicate with each other and hence you will get a broken system if zookeeper fails i hope this is clear to you please write down on the chat window good now we come on to the final tool that is apache ambari in the hadoop ecosystem that we are going to discuss today so apache ambari is a cluster manager okay what does a cluster manager mean or what a, uh, what does a cluster manager do cluster manager manages the hadoop cluster okay using apache ambari you can provision manage and monitor the apache hadoop clusters okay it makes very easy for you to set up a hadoop cluster and then configure all the services that needs to run over the hadoop cluster it could be apache spark service it could be a hue service it could be any other service that you need over the cluster and it can be done very easily using apache ambari so this was basically developed by hortonworks a similar tool is developed by cloudera as well which is called cloudera manager okay however cloudera manager is not an open source tool like apache ambari so apache ambari was developed by hortonworks however it was given to apache later on a similar tool which is a proprietary tool developed by cloudera named as cloudera manager using which you can deploy the cloudera clusters however it is a paid service okay using apache ambari you can also monitor health and status of your hadoop cluster okay now you know the importance of apache ambari and how it can be used to make your life easy okay is that clear to you guys so thank you for the confirmation everyone and with this we come to the end of this session there are certain resources that you can utilize so there is a blog that has been written on hadoop so there is a series of blogs that has been written around hadoop so you can visit that using the url that is www.edureka.co/blog/hadoop-tutorial as well as we have another blog on hadoop ecosystem which has been developed around the content that we went through in this session i will request you to kindly go through it so that your learning is enforced okay so definitely do that and if you have any further queries guys please ask me right now i'll give you a minute to do that Andrea says are there more tools absolutely yes andrea there are multiple other tools that has been developed which can be used along with hadoop ecosystem however the tools that we discussed in today's session are the most widely used tools in the industry so there is one another tool that i know which is one of the top apache projects these days that is called apache fling okay so if you want you can explore that and apart from that there are more tools any other question guys anyone okay so i request you to please let me know how was the session today give your feedback in the chat window itself was the session informative were you able to understand what is the hadoop ecosystem its importance and the various tools that are present in it andrea says got to know many tools 
Great. Ramesh says webinar was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome Ramesh. It was my pleasure. Matthew says great, very informative. Good. Thank you everyone for joining in for the session. We'll again meet in the next session. Till then request you to please go through all the assignments that needs to be done for this module. You can log into your LMS and download all the assignments and be ready with the solutions by next session. Thank you. Have a nice day. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.